It's all good, though. I still love her. Testing, testing. Say something. Something, something, something. Say we something. could do a little something, something. Okay. Talk again. I turned to Only, up. only if it's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Welcome to Consequences of Our Culture Podcast. Um, yeah, we plan to do other shit. Oh, no, it's not too early because we plan to do yeah. other shit. And uh, we had Amber, mm-hmm. right? She was supposed to come. Yeah. And she's not here. No, she's uh, not. So right now we're going to talk about <laughs> married at first sight. But honestly, Amber talks a lot of shit <laughs> about me not being on time right often every time and where she at and i was on time you know i was i was coordinated Mm -hmm. i set everything up Mm -hmm. if you guys could see it it was really nice it's beautiful check out our instagram yeah should be posting it there and uh where is she look at this fucking chair ain't nobody here ain't nobody here it's nobody here but me and Steph. it's just us two it's just us two she has the nerve to talk shit but anyway i'm randall i'm stephanie and yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> we still love you, Amber, but. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> married, married at first sight. So, yeah. it's been it's been popular for a while. Like, um, yeah. I think I remember the 14th season now. I remember my my second wife, and we would watch it, and she said she you know she we had different opinions about it, right? She was saying it was so. It was. It's romantic and it's just so nice and neat, and I get that. You know, it it, mm-hmm. it really you have to be a true romantic to yeah. like so, do that. Okay? Yeah, that's not. But something also that, really open minded. Right, like, you have you to just be gotta really be like, open minded. Yeah, but as far as like, it's it really depends on how you view marriage. Yeah. yeah. So like, I was more so like, marriage is between you. And God, well, you, your person, yeah. is a vow in front of God, yeah, right. And you know, you just fucking squander it with anyone, and then like it's basically saying how how important is marriage if you're just willing to marry anyone, and then mm-hmm. like the chances of it working are so slim, you know? Yeah, like people marry people that they've known for years and it doesn't work out but you're willing to marry a fucking stranger (laughs) you know it's kind of like i get what you're saying it's like yeah but i don't agree (laughs) okay i just feel like i feel like that because you have this like um the like the sanctity of marriage like you know like because you really that's like how you say that i think word. that's how you say it, right Man, I, I was think trying to we, say yeah it. you're trying to say it earlier um, sanct- was, sanct- like, sanctity yeah there sanctity. we go, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but i think if you really do value marriage then i think those are the kind of people that would come on to the show because i think if you really don't obviously we've seen some that don't value marriage obviously because some of them came on there and were trash um like chris from that one season i can't remember season 12 okay. or whatever but anyway the real fans know who i'm talking about anyway um but i do think that there is a level of like reverence that you do have and respect for the institution of marriage when you come onto a show like that because you're saying i'm going to make a commitment to this person even though i haven't met them and all that i think it's the opposite like it's because you care so much about marriage that you're willing to trust the experts because also just keep in mind that they are not just like trust the experts know, okay they're so. trusting these people who have track records of matching people together that 
have is worked in the past. There are people but who have like, been married. What do you mean by like years. worked in the past? Like they're like still two together. Or three years, two or three years isn't like <laughs> working in a marriage. I mean, you know, true. like because my first marriage was almost it was eight, almost eight years, and like I don't even look at that person the same. You mm-hmm. like that person is nothing to me. You know necessarily. Like yeah. I, I get like she's the mother of my kids. So like what's what's a what's a great meter to like say, oh, this is a good marriage. And then at the same time, there's plenty of people in marriages that like don't like each other. Been married for like twenty plus yeah, years. Obviously. And there's mm-hmm. like you people like to put like a length of time as like a a nice metric. For like oh, how well yeah, for a, a how marriage well it's is, like if it's actually working, right? But sometimes people I mean, are just in there for convenience. Sometimes people are in the marriage mm-hmm. for necessity. Yeah, like they they well they feel like it's a necessity. They don't want to mm-hmm. like the dudes don't even like they don't want to pay child support <laughs> or the the women in most instances the mm-hmm. women don't want to like fucking like be out there on their own and have to mm-hmm. support themselves so they're stuck in this marriage well yeah. it's not in their opinion they're stuck yeah. in this marriage but these are people that are afraid to either be independent on their own or like have extra income taken out mm-hmm. but you know but that's not everyone who's stuck in a marriage though that's it's, yeah. you know it's a stories i hear a lot but back to it like so how are these we don't know if these marriage are necessary yes i get what you're saying but i think the the whole point of it though like yes we may not know like okay if they don't if say they don't last you know forever or they don't last 20 plus years and you know is that necessarily a failure i don't think so i think for the point of the show is that you marry this stranger and at the end you have to decide whether you want to choose to stay married with them or not and the fact that a lot of the couples do go on to stay married. Now, whether they would stay married or not after the show is a different conversation because say these people had met, like for one, they probably would have not gotten married at all, never got to experience marriage or never found that person had it not been for the show. You know, so I think that it's still, even if they only have been, you know, together for three years and we say that that's not long enough to say that it's like, you know, that shows like, oh, this works or anything or this was a good thing. But they could have that's still three years married to somebody that they probably would not have met other outside of this show or have not have um, experienced outside of the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, that, they could have but- still on their own met somebody got married and got divorced after a year so i mean so is there so what you're saying is that at least they got those even if they do even if they get divorced at least they got those three years in yeah that's because, terrible though because like you I don't mean, get married i mean yeah, just to have like great, a, a but... solid relationship for an amount of time like every marriage is you know you go into the and i know i'm one to speak being married twice and divorced twice but every marriage you go in there and you're trying to like be in love like yeah, you're and trying that's, for that's the their point run. but i'm saying for us on the outside looking in and we're trying to say whether this was a success or not right why even date and like why don't we all just marry you but know, also to st- st- statistically um arranged marriages last longer too and this is basically an arranged marriage is what they have so going on the- and i'd be so down for an arranged marriage Wow. I wish my parents could have hooked me up. Damn. Just take it back to the olden days. Because I feel like it's not working. Like, what I'm doing right now, like, waiting on a man to, what, approach me at a grocery store or at at church or whatever, you know, and we strike up a conversation and, you know, we go on a couple dates and see if it works and all that, or go on a dating site. It's not really working. I feel like, you know, even... If somebody like would like, I feel like even folks that have told me um, that have been married several, like seven plus years or married, um, you know, 20 plus years, a lot of times they met either like, you know, some of their friends were, you know, introduced them or their family. Like even that is like it may not be technically arranged, but it's like even that's still like a level of arrangement is like 
yeah, my mom introduced me to her friend's son, you know? Yeah, give me one like, second. I'll cut this out. Well, oh, yeah. you could go ahead. Continue. Yeah. So, but yeah, basically, I feel like arrangements really might be what we need to bring back because clearly none of us know what we're doing. Okay. And well, maybe not none of us. Obviously, there's people who have gotten married that found their person, all that good stuff. But I mean, there's like even on the show, I've noticed that like the the age I feel like is getting higher, too. Like, I feel like it used to be, like, late 20s on well, there. But there's been a lot of, like, 35, close to 40. As, like, as we get older, you know, there's a shift in priorities. Yeah. You know? Like, well, I mean, not as we get older. As, as the years have gone by, there's a shift in priorities. You know, people were getting married young, like, mm -hmm. you know, back in, let's say, like, the 50s. You know stuff like that but now right. people there's more people going to school getting their life together before mm -hmm. marriage beforehand a lot of people you know it was more about love and mm -hmm. will make it work but to the point that you said about like arranged marriages like okay i could see like in some cultures i could see like in some cultures that um how it could work, right? Because a lot of those people who have arranged marriages, throughout their like whole entire life, they've been conditioned to mm -hmm. like be prepared to uh, have an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. They ne they knew from the get -go, well, most of them knew from the get go that they weren't going to have a choice, that their parents were going to find someone for them, yeah. right? But for more Western civilizations is more so you know it's more freedom like yeah. you're you're here to pick your your partner mm -hmm. and you know sometimes people don't always I, I could say like end up with someone in the long run but that's good because honestly a lot of people aren't ready to be married a lot of mm -hmm. people will never there's some people that never will be ready to be yeah. Just because some people are just so emotionally unintelligent or yeah. stuck in their stuff that it, if they were in a marriage, it'd be terrible for them or the other person and or the other person. Mm. And I mean, even people who've been married for years, they're like they're some of their some people complain about their wives all the time. I hear it mm. all the time. Like yeah. they all they've said way more negative things than positive things about their wife. Even when I was married and, like, me and my wife were going through it or whatever, I would never, like, talk shit about them. Mm -hmm. You know? Some people just aren't there. So to have an arranged, uh, you know, society, especially in Western culture, mm -hmm. where there's so many free-thinking ideas, to have a society of arranged marriage, sounds like it'd be terrible. It sounds like it, people well, just, like, hate each other most of the time. Well, actually, I don't know. I feel like... You are, you've kind of made um, the point of how, of why like arranged marriages probably should come back is I feel like we, and maybe just tweaked a little bit, right? Like instead of it being, you know, um, a girl is, you know, 16 years old and having to go marry some, you know, 50 year old man because her parents told her to, you know, maybe let's not go back to that. But like where, you know, we like where the person is coming to their parents or coming to an expert and saying because they also have the um the indian matchmaker that's a whole nother show but just for the sake of this conversation we're going to bring that show up as well okay that's like they go to this woman and she like and she they tell her everything that they're looking for she has some questions things like that she's an expert in like in matchmaking and she also reads their astrology chart she goes through this whole thing and i mean it's a part of their culture, I think, so I don't know, but it's like, you know, she goes through these, these steps or whatever, right, when they are ready and they come to her. And I feel like that, because a lot of times we, we have in our own minds of like what we feel like we want in a spouse, and I feel like the people closest to us, like me and you are obviously best friends, great friends. Correct. I feel like you could choose very well for me that like 
not saying that I want you to choose my husband, right. but you know what I'm saying? Like people closest. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, let me know off camera though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like people who are closest to you, I feel like choosing or having some type of say, like helping you to find like, no, you don't really know this about yourself, but you can be a little bossy or you can be, you know, a little tight about certain things. You need someone who's going to kind of bring you out of your shell or somebody who's going to kind of put you in your, your place a little bit. Not not enough to squash your spirit, but enough to kind of like someone who can handle that, you know, because there's things that you don't even know, realize about yourself, you know, that you don't realize you need. And so I feel like getting I feel like going back to a level of arranges arrangements could work i mean because people you know they're closest to you they know you well enough they should to pick somebody that you know pick the right person you put a, like a lot of trust into other people you know like is for a decision that's going to affect mm -hmm. you for the rest well that's of what i'm life. saying it's got to be tweaked it wouldn't be like it was back in the day where you just you know yeah like blindly just let them do it like i mean like this show I I probably would try it, but I wouldn't want to be on camera because it's embarrassing. Because who wants to? So it's have embarrassing. See so that? you. If it works out, it's not that embarrassing. But you know. N no, I just. <laughs> I mean, like anything works out for someone, right? Like, well, that's not that's not a proper way to say it. it there's something. Anything could work for somebody. I don't know how to phrase it. You get what I'm saying? Like, not well, everything, what I believe isn't, you know, nowhere near doctrine, mm -hmm. right? That married at first sight could very well work out for, like, a couple. They could last forever, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like for the majority of people, it's, like, a terrible idea. You know, I, maybe. Yeah, no, I I couldn't like if I got married on a whim or like at first sight, I feel like you don't even know that person. It's a stranger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is definitely. And I know I know a, a lot of dudes concept. are just down for like to get any girl. You know, as long as mm -hmm. they look beautiful. But. Well, and also at the end, the, the you know at the end of the show, you can say. No, I don't want to. At the end of eight weeks, you decide if you want to continue on in the marriage, or you can go ahead and get a divorce. And, and you, just does let it, it get annulled, or is it I divorce? guess because I mean it's only been eight it weeks, really so I I don't know how it works, but I assume it's just an annulment if it's only been eight weeks. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like, um, and then I feel like these processes, like they're kind of made. You end up kind of um, uh, expediting, like even though it's only eight weeks, it's like all the exercises and the things that they had them do for those eight weeks kind of like expedites the process of getting to know that person. Things that may take months to know about a person you would know, you know, in a couple of days. Okay. We're so. going to take a, a short break. We'll be back. It's getting, it's decent. I guess it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> All right, we are back, and we're talking about how people are shitting on the sanctity of marriage. <laughs> but um, as you can see, Amber still isn't here. Yeah, yeah. Like we didn't, we didn't even like, like twenty minutes, twenty, and sh still not fucking here. You believe that shit? Anyway, mm -mm -mm. back to like married <laughs> at first sight, right? So. I, I believe the dating phase is very important. Like, so marriage is hard, and it's, I feel like it's going to get rocky either mm. way. But the dating phase is ultra important. Like, there's times when I'm dating a girl, she seems, like, perfect. Mm. And then, like, after four or five months... I start to notice patterns that are like red flags that I didn't see initially. Mm. Getting married at first sight, you don't get the opportunity to do that. Mm. And then like mm. like people getting married after, let's say, P 
people say getting married six months is too early sometimes. Yeah. Well, getting married without even knowing the person. I feel like it takes yeah. a lot to be. I don't feel like there's just. I don't. I'm not like a. I'm a romantic, but I'm not super ro- like a super romantic mm-hmm. that feels like. Oh, I fell in love with her at first sight. Oh, that's my person. That was the person I meant to be with. I feel like you're compatible with a few, you know a certain amount of different people in the world. It's a few things that have to be checked off for you to like feel attracted to this person, to love this person, to understand this person. I don't feel like there's one person across the globe somewhere for every person. But you need time like to weed that out because yeah it's also been like people i've dated and then we finally move in together and it's shit it turns when you live with a person it's a totally different person so what i'm basically trying to say is that like i feel like it's no matter how it works it's way too it's way too sudden for you and then Back to your point about arranged marriages, like just imagine being in an arranged marriage and wondering like, what is this true love? You you can't like necessarily confirm if this true love because you were just put together with this person. Well, that's the thing. I don't think anybody's expecting that they're going to fall in love and that everything's going to like happen just like that when they you get married. Be married. Well, like they you're supposed to grow in love is how you what like at least with arranged marriages that's what the thought is is that like you focus less on because the love is not enough like anybody's been married for years and years older couples are going to always tell you love is not enough that's that's not what keeps them together and so when you focus on (laughs) (laughs) what are you doing Okay. Love you. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, they're all going to tell you that, you know, that love isn't like what keeps them together. So when they focus less on like, the love will come, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like over time. And that's kind of, and that's basically like the, in the show, that is what they're thinking is that like it's they're not supposed to fall in love like the moment they see each other at the wedding right. um it's supposed to be the those are what the the eight weeks are for they have a week where you know they go for their honeymoon and they have like two weeks where they or a couple of weeks where they're like living together in a mutual space you know where it's neither one of their spots it's like a spot that i guess the show pays for or whatever and you know they live in this apartment together they then they move into one of the whoever they move into one of the spots the woman or the man's house and move in there together. And it's like, there's a whole like process. And then by the end, after they've been able to see each other in the honeymoon, the living together and all that, then they make the decision whether they want to like continue trying to see if, you know what this is, like if it'll work. But I mean, I don't know. I think it's, it makes sense to me. I don't know why, but it just, it's not so much just like the romantic side of it. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, as a fan, just like as somebody who's watching the show, I'm always like, that's always fun to watch and see, like, who's going to make it and see their connections and all of that. But at the end of the day, like, I think there's, it's more to it than just like, like, you know, oh, we're, you know, going to fall in love and all that. A lot of times, like, because they are married, like, legally married, it takes out the whole like you know kind of putting up a front in the beginning and all that it's like we are we've passed the dating phase we are married it's time to like dig in and figure out if this is what we want to do whether we want to stay married or not you know so you know i get that and i get that it of course i know that it takes more than love to you know maintain a marriage but you're giving these people eight weeks to fall in love basically (laughs) No, that, they don't actually. Oh, what did they do? There's couples that did not fall like that. The guy, the woman clearly was like, I'm ready to say I love you. But he wasn't. Right. It wasn't until way later after the show. And then even then there, she was like, yeah, he hasn't said it yet. And then he finally said it on the. Imagine being married to that person. Yeah. Person I, mean, I felt like, I mean, that's to me is kind of. 
But he clearly was attracted to her. He liked her. Right. But it had exactly. only been eight weeks. Like, you just, I mean, and she understood that. Like, because that's the point is that it's, this is a marriage and they're making that commitment to figure it out and see if, you know, if it'll work. But, I mean, for some, it's not just, like, the marriage isn't just about, like, the love part. They feel like that'll grow. And it usually does. Usually. I mean, I have friends who said their parents have been were arranged and they still hate each other to this day. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> some people it works, though. It, whether, what it comes down to is compatibility. And, like, so you're letting people put you guys together with the hopes of it being stable. But you guys are... It's, it's basically jumping the broom with a complete stranger with, like, something. It sounds like a lot of bullshit, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't know. I get it. I'm trying to, like, make my point, but I can't, like, put the words together. Well, but, I think I understand what you're saying. I think there is a level. I can see how there's a level of, like, this is not a real thing. Clearly, you don't really care about marriage if you're willing to just marry right. a random person that you've never met. But then right, I also like, see I the should other just side marry, of it, like, too. That, like, like, what if I get just, matched with a crackhead? You're like, and that's when, at the end of the eight weeks, you say, you know what? This ain't going to work. <laughs> I'm going to stand or there. Or at the be, beginning, too. I mean, be like, what the fuck is this shit? they can say that. They can say, like, there is, um, they can, like, when they see each other at the altar, go, ooh, no, nah, you're not attractive to me. Like, this ain't going to work. Like, they don't have to, they don't have to marry the person when they see them, you know? Okay. They could yeah. just say, ooh. I mean, there's one lady who wasn't attracted to her husband, like, straight up from season one. I believe it was season one. So that means they had to have been married now, I think, for seven years or so. They got kids, they, they, they together together, you know what I'm saying? And she was not attracted to them. She was crying after the wedding and was like, I don't think this is going to work. Like, I'm not attracted to him. And I understood that man really wasn't that. He, he didn't look very, he didn't look good at all. But could you? she grew to love him. He kept at, at it. He felt like he could win her over. And she decided to go through the process, trust the process, go through the eight weeks and she ended up falling in love with this man and now they got like four kids they've been married all these years they're still together it's but, worked you know aren't you just because for, it, at that point you're i got what i was trying to say you're mm -hmm. forcing yourself to fall in love it's like i've already went yeah. through this marriage and now like i'm gonna try to make it work with this stranger i'm gonna force myself to love this person. I don't think it's necessarily force. I think that it is commitment. Just like in marriage, in a typical, if you were to, if she would have dated him and she had fallen in love and all, she went through, did it the traditional way, right? right. You still have to make a commitment every single day to choose to love this person and be with them every day. Like there isn't, it's not always, you know, it's not always right. easy. It's not going to always be butterflies. You're not going to feel like, not. you know, in love with this person every single day, but you've made a commitment to them to stay, to be with them for better or for worse. And therefore you are making this commitment. You're going to try to make it work. Right. I, even on the, you know, bad days. And, and for her, it was, even though he was ugly. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that marriage is already, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's, it's beautiful to be with someone you love, you know? Mm. But it's not an easy thing. And you're making it even harder by marrying a stranger, a person yeah, you don't know. Yeah, I guess know. so. Like, you know. But, I mean, if you're not having good luck out there, and especially... I feel like, and I think you told me this before the before we started recording that we are putting our own like timetable on it because I said Correct. like how well I'm 31 it's time like it's like I need to find my person mm -hmm. and you know and I just feel like I, I forgot what the point of me where I was going with that. Are you talking about women have a biological clock? Yeah, that, yeah. I think that um, yeah. I was gonna say like we. 
I think there is this focus of, you know what, like what I have not, what I have been doing does not work. It has proven to not work. So at this point, what do I have to lose? When I'm in my 30s, time's ticking. I want a family. I want to have children. The doctor says I'm a geri- it's a geriatric pregnancy after 35. I, I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of time to waste. You That's know? the term they use? Yes, geriatric they use geriatric pre- pregnancy. pregnancy. That's what they call it. Damn. Isn't it great? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, you know, so you do get to a point where you're like, you know what? What I've been doing, clearly I cannot seem to find the right person that I should be with. So maybe I should talk to these experts. Maybe I should try it. At least give it a chance. Like, because what yeah. I'm doing is not working to get the, the results that I want. So I get what you're you know? saying. Like, you feel like you don't want to, you want, you rather take this chance than to waste time. Yeah. I get that. Than to mm-hmm. waste time doing nothing. And I get that. I do. And call it desperate. Call it what you want. I mean, it may, maybe it is a level of desperate, um, of debt. De- whatever it's I, I know what you're trying to do. yeah I, I, I know what you're <laughs> like, trying to what say what is that word yeah um but yeah I mean maybe it is desperate to, to do that but I mean I think it's no different than when you're like man I ain't been able to find nobody at the grocery store let me just go on and download this app real quick <laughs> like I'm gonna, you know I think I don't really see really a difference in mm. you know the level of desperacy anyway um I doing an arranged thing or you know like it's still a non-traditional route right so and um know. man those kids are loud yeah and um so it also like how i said how you view marriage like to me it's like a sham and I, I explain mm-hmm. like how I view marriage, but honestly, the institution of marriage that we know now wasn't always the case. I, you know, people used to, you know, pawn their daughters off for like, you know, land, mm-hmm. cows, you know, what have you. Yeah. And um, so to them, marriage was, you know, just an agreement to, you know, get something beneficial. Mm-hmm. And if that's your understanding of it i could see how you would be okay with you know marrying at first sight but come on man like could you imagine like <laughs> the honeymoon how fucking awkward that is like you're standing it there it's not that awkward for if, them wondering if i'm gonna get some or not you're probably it's, not that's it's weird. actually not as awkward as you think for well okay it is pretty awkward for yeah, some of them gotta be but the ones that click right away and they see each other and just immediately have that vibe and it just works, there ain't no awkward, awkwardness at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it just depends on the on the person. Yeah. So. Well, you got anything else? No. No? Huh? I'm good. This, this was a good debate, you yeah. know. Uh, you have your opinion, I have mine. <laughs> and I respect yours and you respect mine. So. Yeah. It was great. You know, hopefully you guys are out there in love and Yeah. You guys do whatever works for you. There is no like one avenue that's guaranteed to work for everybody. You know? Everything er, do just do what works for you. Okay? I couldn't do that shit, but you know. <laughs> uh this is it for this week. I'm Randall. I'm Stephanie. And you guys have a great day. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Taking our sweet ass time to get here. Been sitting here for hours waiting on her. I'm tired now. I don't even feel like talking anymore.
She should be here by then. But, you know, probably not. Right, she was worried about you not starting on time. She said she was going to give you till 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock came and went. It's almost damn near 3 o'clock. <laughs>